Istanbul, the morning of September 22nd, 1855. The ship slowed down at 5 in the morning to enter the Istanbul port before sunrise. At 6 o'clock, we saw America, not a city. The rising sun was shining through all the windows and minarets while feasting our eyes with their golden glow. It truly is a fascinating city. Until that day, I had not heard the call of a prayer before. Hoja's voice was inviting all Muslims to pray from minaret tied to a divine melody. Istanbul, the capital of the Ottoman Empire of 556 years, welcomed us as a beautiful, charming woman. When we arrived from France, we brought camping equipment and tents with us. We couldn't anticipate what environment we would encounter. Tents were never set up. My friend and secretary, Henrik Schwowski, were speechless at what he witnessed. First, we were taken to Galata Pier with a boat and set out to go to the house of a Polish doctor who had come to the deck of the ship. Passing through attractive smells and the colorful clothes of the Ottoman people, with the fragrant dishes of Ottoman in my mind, we came to the room we will stay, small, yet smells like home, which I did not know that I would spend my last days in. Since it was a very costly journey from Paris to Turkey, me and my friends had to live a modest life. The house we were about to stay was only a humble single room. Some Poles living here wanted to help us, but my heart was not willing to accept it. The longing for homesickness was stirring in my heart. I certainly had a more comfortable life in Paris, but now I had something priceless here in Istanbul. If we could, we would save our country from the invaders and make it a place where free Poles live. This feeling made me ecstatic. There is a small poultry in the garden of the house we were staying in. House owners said that we can take as many eggs and chickens as we want. The journey has made us famish, so we started to cook our first Turkish meal. This Turkish dish was simple but very tasty. After eating the meal, wanted to heat up the Turkish tile stew in the room and get a little warm. As we were at the end of September, the weather got a little chilly at night. My friend Henrik wanted me to recite one of my poems while we sip the vodka we brought with us. I read on my first night in Turkey. To Ardovsky's wife, eating, drinking, smoking, loader, revealingly and well to do, they shake the inn from floor to rafter with huzazing and halu. There, Twardovsky's head the table, arms akimbo pasha-wise, and he shouts, Show what you're able! Jokes and trinks and terrifies. Round the soldier praying bully, scolding, showing loosely, hums his sword blade, and the bully, rabbit in his place, they see. At a lawyer sitting drinking, quietly his bows of grog, he has set his wallet clinking, and the lawyer is a dog. To a tailor's for hat clapping, three long tubes he smacks his nose, tires, and at his sudden tapping, out of the dancing vodka flows. First, the chicken's head is cut with the help of a veg. In our time, chickens were not sold in supermarkets in the shadow form. The feathers of the chicken are plucked one by one. After the feathers are removed, the chicken is smoked over a low fire to get rid of the remaining feathers. 
Water and salt are placed in a copper Turkish pot placed on the fire and the whole chicken is cooked on a light barbecue fire for an half an hour. The chicken is taken out of the bowl, taken into another bowl and waited for cooking. Meanwhile, since we are three people, we soak three cups of a rice in hot water for a half an hour. Then we use the chicken speed to cook the rice in another bowl. We strain the rice and cook it with butter to roast the beef. Then we added the chicken water to rice and cook it on a light barbecue fire for 20 minutes. We picked the cooked chicken and placed it on the cooked rice and 